Let's now get back out to Glendale, Arizona, where the Cardinals were on the field inside State Farm Stadium out there today. And so let's talk a little bit about this franchise. Who look, um, they've got their work cut out for them. I don't, I don't think that's that's ta- telling tales out of school here. I mean, with the way that this franchise has kind of started to turn over a little bit, new regime, new GM, new head coach, and you might miss your quarterback for a portion of this season in Kyler Murray. So let's talk about some of the young players here. Let's give, like, path to the draft uh, in, in July if we can here. Here, DJ, because Paris Johnson, you know, figures prominently in this team's plans, not only this year, but of course for the future. Yeah, you're hoping that you have a, a pillar along your offensive line. You see DJ Humphreys there, number 74, but Paris Johnson has that ability to play inside. He's done that in the past at yeah. Ohio State, but he's his landing spot's going to be at tackle, and this is somebody that, from a size, length, athleticism, is, is off the charts. It reminds me a little bit of what we saw a few years back when you look at the, the draft. We had those four tackles. Yeah. And you look at the the first one overall that went to the Giants. Andrew Thomas. Andrew Thomas wasn't a finished product when he got to the league. Boy, now he's feeling pretty good. But he has developed himself (laughs) and gotten better, and all that ability has really come out. So I think that's kind of the blueprint. That's what you're hoping for there uh, with Paris Johnson. And I'll skip down to the fourth one there, Michael Wilson on offense. I think he's got a chance to give this offense a little different twist. They've got some undersized speed guys. Rondell Moore is going to supply that in a big way. But he's going to be able to give you some size on third down and down in the red area. I think those can be two nice building blocks for this offense whenever Kyler Murray gets back in the fold. Yeah, no question. And when we were showing you that, that video earlier, the offense, you saw Paris Johnson. That was number 70 lined up at right tackle. So the guy's played inside at right guard. He's played outside at the left tackle. Now starting in at right tackle to give the, the Cardinals the best chance to get those those best five guys out there on the field. Michael Wilson, uh, you know, stand out down at the senior bowl. Um, and, and, you know, coming from Stanford, guy who's done a lot. Yeah, what do you got? I should, should mention, too, by the way, you're looking at these names. The two in the middle. I believe are both on PUP. So yeah. BJ Ojolari and Garrett Williams both coming off injury. So sure. you have to be patient a little bit with them. But to me, I don't think, it, you know, as we get back to Kyler Murray, yeah. what's the rush? Don't rush your young right. guys to get back on the field. Right. Do not rush Kyler Murray to get back on the field. This is, we said earlier, is a discovery year. You want to play as many of these young guys as you can. You want to figure out who's going to be a part of this team going forward. Um, and you look at a guy like Colt McCoy, we just saw on the screen filling in. Colt's got his job is to give you a fair evaluation of the guys that they have around him. Sure. And he's fully capable of doing that. Yeah, no question. And like it, it, this year could be a year to give you a vision of what's to come, right? Correct. So like when BJ Ojolari comes off PUP, you know, you, you get him as an edge rushing tandem with one of last year's early round draft picks in MyJ Sanders from mm-hmm. Cincinnati. And like, okay, now we'll have a tandem for years to come here trying to harass the passer uh, on the other side of the ball. So I think there's that that's kind of what we're we're talking about here with this franchise is where we're we're, we're we have a chance to be really good, you know, in the coming years and kind of see that develop throughout training camp in the preseason. It's going to be a tough division. Yeah. When no you question. Look I mean, it always is there in the NFC West. And Jonathan Gannon, the head coach, will certainly have his hands full. And our Patrick Claibon was there watching practice today and got a chance to chat with Gannon about, you know, what this training camp is going to be like for his team and what it's going to be like for him as a first year head coach. Here's the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals, Jonathan Gannon. Coach, uh, first of all, tell me how, how things went today on Back Together Saturday. It was awesome. Back Together Saturday. The fans were out here. They were loud. It was uh, a lot of good energy in the building. It was fun today. All right, Coach, last time we were able to talk, you were seconds off of your introductory news conference. Yeah. There was a lot to do. Yeah. What do you think about the work that you've done from that day yeah. to today? Just really um, grateful that the staff jumped all in. The players are all in. And uh, I think we're going the right way. we got a lot of things to clean up and a lot of improvements to make. But uh, I like where we're heading right now. On the players being all in, we talked to Buddha yesterday. He said that when you guys spoke in the offseason, he believed what you were preaching. And that made him buy into the process a little bit more. I asked him what it was, and he, he talked about the attention to detail. There's so many details for you to pay attention to now as the head coach. How are you managing all that? Yeah, you can't have blinders on. But I think the staff helps me out a lot with that, making sure I got my eyes wide open. And And um, honestly, we got really good leadership on the team. And the vets kind of, you really want the vets to kind of push the ball where you want it to go. And they've done a good job with it. Uh, Speaking of some of those vets uh, on offense, it's kind of a management situation, figuring out uh, how things are going to be at quarterback. Where are you in that process now and evaluating the rest of the Yeah, they're competing. We got got four guys right now. And then obviously Kyler's on pup. But four guys are competing that are very capable. And uh, I like where they're heading. 
Uh, it's a really good room. They all have different skill sets, and uh, they're doing a good job. Uh, something that we, you talked about earlier today was, especially in terms of coverage, not everyone's going to have the same preferred techniques, but you still got to paint within the lines. Is is having those guys give that kind of input, does that help a little bit more in the buy-in process? Yeah, I think so, because it shows you it's, it's not my way or the highway. I'm not out the one in between the white lines. They are. So I think as long as we can get done what we need to get done as a unit first, then I want them guys to feel comfortable make all kinds of plays and have fun doing it. And in terms of your evaluation process, because this is still year one, yeah. still figuring things out, when does the evaluation stop or, or does it? It never stops, Patrick. It never <laughs> stops. So um, it doesn't stop for us either. You know what I mean? That's a two-way street. So it's fun because it's a challenge and you got to come to work every day with your sleeves up, ready to go. And, and you mentioned that things are going to look a little different on the offensive line as, as camp goes on. Is, is that just fun for us? Or is that a part of the evaluation? Evaluation, they switch things the evaluation, but kind of fun for you guys, too. I, I tell our media all the time, you guys will see when we play Washington. And, and so we uh, saw a lot of Isaiah deep um, all the way through. How has he been, and what's his adjustment been like? He's been awesome. He's elevated his game, I think, and we're trying him out at a couple different spots, but he's all in on everything. His attitude's great. His attention to detail is picked up, and uh, he's doing a good job for us. Uh, when I talked to Zach, because Zach's been with you in so many of these spots, I asked him what was different, and he said, you have more swag now. What are your thoughts on your swag? I don't know that. When Zach was around me at the different places, the normally the head coach or the coordinators or whatever had so much swag, I just kind of took a back seat. But uh, I think what he's saying is I think he knows really who I am at my core, and I've, I think I've shown that on myself. Well, Coach, thank you so thank much. You so good much, luck. Patrick, thank you so much. Have a good one.